Praise the Lord. In the Bible, it's, there's a place where the Jewish leaders are being confronted about uh, slavery. And of course, from their perspective, they looked and saw that their lives, that they were free. They said, we're not bound to anybody. We are Abraham's descendants, you know. And they couldn't see that they were in slavery to sin. They couldn't see it. But Jesus saw clearly what the problem was, you know. And he was telling them about this uh, uh, slavery and how God could get them free. But they couldn't see it. And when you think about it, our world today is pretty much in the same boat. There is so much wrong going on in our world today, and people don't recognize it. They don't recognize that it's wrong, number one, and then number two, they don't recognize that it's slavery. But it is slavery on a large scale, and our, our world is dominated by, by sin. And of course, uh, if you have slavery, you're going to have a slave master. And we know the devil loves to be in that position. He glorifies himself through the negative things that sin produces. And somehow he thinks he's got this great kingdom going on. Well, it's not going to last. Praise God that we are in for a major intervention. God is going to provide freedom to our world, the freedom that we don't really understand that is necessary. Because here in America, we, we think we're free. We think we're a free people here and, we're, and we can do just about whatever we want. But that's not the kind of freedom I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the freedom that comes from being free from the burden of sin. That's the freedom that God wants us to enjoy. And the freedom that we have in America will mean so much more when, when that happens. Let's read here in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. He says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? There's only two ways we can go here. We are slaves. Obviously, from this statement right here, we are slaves. It's up to us to decide whose slave we're going to be. Are we going to be a slave to sin? Or are we going to be a slave to righteousness? That's what God is putting before us today. And the, the fact is that we are looking at our society, we know that our society is a slave to sin. Our society is dom dominated by sinful things, sinful ways, sinful leaders. And the results of that are obviously death. Uh, we have uh, so many of our population dies from so many things that are really not, not things that would normally kill us, you know. But because of sin dominating everything, uh, the lifespan of humanity has been shrunken down again, you know. Now, there's so many wrong things happening, you know, and it's causing death on a large scale and way, way too early. Uh, we have uh, childhood diseases and problems that are, it just, man, breaks my heart, you know. Here you have little innocent children that really haven't been involved in a sinful lifestyle, you know. Most little kids are, you know, they're thinking about playing with cars and dolls and little innocent stuff, you know. And here they're having to suffer such tremendous attacks from diseases. Uh, if you watch uh, uh, on uh, that channel, I think it's called MeTV, it's a constant fundraiser for cancer research things for, for children. And they show the pictures of these little kids that, you know, they'd be run rather be outside playing somewhere on a playground or something, you know. But here they are tied up to this little thing, you know, with tubes coming out and being fed stuff to that to try to help them overcome the dramatically horrible diseases that they're having to contend with, you know. And, uh, and we know that the, that the initial cause for all this is sinful. There's something wrong. Something our society is producing that's wrong that's inflicting this on our children. 
I have some ideas as to what it is. You know. uh, it, it really, really bothers me, and this is just a pet peeve of mine. I really think it's, it's evil what our government is doing by spraying chemicals into our sky. That, that can't be something positive. Why do we need our government to spray every single day chemicals into our sky? Why do we need that? Society has done without that for as long as the earth has been here. But all of a sudden, we need these chemicals sprayed on us every day? Now, this is going to get your curiosity up, but look up in the sky. Look up in the sky and watch what they're doing. These are not contrails, natural contrails that come from an airplane. No, these are chemtrails. Chemicals are being sprayed into our, our land. And we were just talking about gardens. I really believe it's starting to have an effect on the gardening. Something is going wrong. This year, everybody I've talked to with gardens complained that their gardens just did not go this year. It, it, they would start off okay and then they just kind of flatlined, you know. So something's going on. I kind of suspected it's the water because we know we get the water from the ground and, of course, we smart people, scientists and all, said, you know, have saying, well, you got to put some chlorine and some fluoride in there before you can use it. <laughs> you, know, you know, for thousands of years we didn't do that, but all of a sudden we had to add these chemicals to our water now. It's, it's like madness, and it's, I believe it's having a, a dramatic negative impact on society, you know. And now we have so many diseases. And it is, isn't it curious to you that we have all these diseases, and then here comes the pharmaceuticals to the rescue on white horses. And they say, hey, take this drug. And you watch TV, and there's drug after drug after drug. Here, I think, I think they're, the, they're causing the problem with these chemicals and things they're doing to society. And then they come to the rescue. And how much money are these people making? Wow. Tremendous amounts of money, you know. You know, they, it seems like they do it just enough to keep us sick and alive so that we can pay them for their drugs. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But it just, it just seems that way to me. Sin is dominating our society, and <clears throat> now we have a lot of these negative impacts uh, to deal with, you know. And we know that sin produces death. That's the problem, you know. And then that's just one thing, one aspect, that's just like my little pet peeve, you know. What about the rest? There is so much sin. Matter of fact, I want to read it out of here. This has been going on for a long time, these sins that I'm about to read here. And it's continually had a, a negative impact on our societies. And this is Paul the Apostle in Romans, and it starts in um, chapter 1, verse 24. Now, this is a, a very descriptive way of telling us what sin is. So there should be no doubt whatsoever what sin is. Okay, God preserved this word for us so that we could know what's the wrong thing, okay? And it's and right here in this, this is a living, see, the living Bible translation, so it's kind of like, you know, regular conversation that we use words in, you know. It's not so much Bible term. It's more of like our daily language. So listen very closely to this definitions of sin. So God let them go ahead into every sort of sexual sin and do whatever they wanted to. Yes, vile sinful things with each other's bodies. Instead of believing what they knew was the truth about God, they deliberately chose to believe lies. So they prayed to the things God made, but wouldn't obey the blessed God who made these things. That is why God let go of them and let them do all these evil things so that even their women turned against God's natural plan for them and indulged in sex sin with each other. And the men, instead of having a normal sex relationship with women, burned with lust for each other. Men doing shameful things with other men and as a result getting paid within their own souls with the penalty they richly deserve. So it was... What, so it was that when they gave God up and would not even acknowledge Him, 
God gave them up to do everything their evil minds could think of. Their lives become full of every kind of wickedness and sin, of greed and hate, envy, murder, fighting, lying, bitterness, and gossip. They were backbiters, haters of God, insolent, proud braggarts, always thinking of new ways of sinning and continually built, disobeying their parents. They tried to misunderstand, broke their promises, and were heartless without pity. They were fully aware of God's death penalty for these crimes, yet they went right ahead and did them anyway and encouraged others to do them too. Wow. Doesn't that pain our society? Golly. Here we have a society today that promotes sin, that glorifies sin, and puts it out on display and then tries to get others to follow like-minded. You know, one of the great tragedies of our time, too, is the poor little kids that get brainwashed into transitioning from being a girl to a boy or a boy to a girl. How terrible is that? They are taking medical instruments that are normally preserved for, for surgery to save a person's life and they're using it to mutilate our children. Terrible. I mean, it's bad enough for the child, but what kind of parent, what, what are they thinking? How in the world could they even think that this is a, a good thing? And yet, the media and the movies and even our government glorifies it and protects it and promotes it. Yeah, we're in a bad situation. Sin is trying to dominate our land. It is, it is working overtime. And here where the Bible says here that they spend their time inventing new ways to sin. I, I never thought that there would be such a thing as a transition surgery. I, could, I didn't even could imagine that. But somebody did. Came up with a new way to sin. And then we pray for the children because we know that's like the, the last holdout and the enemy is targeting the kids. He wants to attack the kids because that's a reflection of who God is. The innocence, the love, the purity, the holiness of children. And here we have the enemy. Yeah, deliberately attacking that. I mean, I, I'm ashamed at our so-called leaders that would stand behind evil, wicked things that attack our children. Right now, and I mentioned this before, but right now in America, pedophiles are starting to be a protected class. My goodness. Y'all heard it too, huh? Wasn't just me. <laughs> yeah. They're working on trying to protect pedophiles. You know what their label is now instead of being called a pedophile? Map. Minor attractive person. Wow. They're inventing new ways to sin. Yeah. They're trying to justify their sinful per, uh, perversions and try to make us agree with it. You know, I mean, I know the gay and the homosexual thing, that's what they want to do with their own selves, that's their body, their choice and stuff. But you can't make us agree that it's a good lifestyle. We can't agree with that. Our God just told us that it's going to cause problems. There's going to be hurt. People that choose that lifestyle are going to get hurt. There's going to be death involved in that thing, you know. We know that, we see it clearly. Matter of fact, Let's take a minute and pray for those under that delusion. Okay, let's pray. Father, we come before you in the most holy name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Father, we know a whole part of our society has bought into the lie of homosexuality and all those perversions, Father. Father, we pray for those people that they would have a wake-up call in their lives so that they can recognize the sin that is dominating them, the slavery that they're, that they're into, Father God. pray. We pray for them, Father, that they would open their eyes and see it for what it is. Father, rescue them 
from that evil thing that is working in their lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. See, we're not here mentioning sin to condemn people. It's all about rescuing people. Our lives were dominated one time with sin. We recognize that. And we know we needed a Savior. And Jesus was there for us. He rescued us from our sin. And He will rescue you from your sin. He wants to do that. He doesn't want any condemnation. He doesn't want to judge you. He wants to rescue you from what sin is doing. Sin is an awful, awful thing. Now let's turn here to uh, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 34. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. I think that's pretty obvious. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. God wants us to live. God is all about life. The devil, he's all about death. But our God is all about life. And God can rescue a person from the most vile and sinful lifestyle that we could imagine or can invent. God can rescue that person because we were some of those people. He rescued us. We are the evidence of God's goodness and grace. God will overlook and forgive all sin no matter how Terrible it might be. God can forgive that sin. And He wants to forgive that sin. He wants to liberate us from sin so that we can truly be free. Our purpose and our design by our Heavenly Father was to make us in His image and in His likeness so that He could have fellowship with us. That's God's purpose. We are His offspring. We belong to Him. He belongs to us. We are part of Him. But when a person decides on their own free will to submit to sin and become a slave to sin, God cannot relate to them. He will not relate to sinful people. I know a lot of sinful people that are stuck in sinful habits and they pray. And to me, that's the saddest condition to be in because their prayers are not heard. They're not heard. The only prayer that God will listen to from a sinful person is a prayer of repentance. That's the only prayer. I know when I was a kid, I always had stomach issues. So I was always sick. And I was always praying. Always praying because that's the only thing I knew to do. You know? And I was always praying. But I prayed in vain. I didn't get healed. No, I suffered with that till finally the Lord showed me a way out of that, you know. Because I hadn't prayed that one prayer, that prayer of repentance. The only way to be free from sin is we must acknowledge that we are sinners. All have sinned. We're not standing up here saying that we're less sinful than you. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all means all. So we're all in this together. The only remedy, the only remedy is to turn away from our sin and turn to our God. God has made it so easy for us to remedy this situation. None of us have to uh, sacrifice ourselves and crawl up a big hill and in, in repentance and... and and contrition and, and hurt ourselves and maybe spill some blood or no that's not required of us all that's required of us is repentance turn away from sin as soon as we turn away from sin and turn to our father he will run to meet us and when we meet our father face to face all we have to do is say we're sorry for our sins and ask for forgiveness 
It's a 100% guarantee God will hear that prayer and He will forgive us of our sin. Not only will He forgive us of our sin, but He will wipe out all the record that has been stored up against us. All the awful things that we have done throughout our lives, the lies, the cheating, the conniving, the gossip, and maybe even worse lies than that, there are some. He will forgive every one of them. And He will wipe the slate clean and give you another opportunity to become a slave to righteousness. And I guarantee you, righteousness will not treat you bad. <laughs> yeah, when you're living right, things go good for you. Yeah, there are trouble once in a while. Yeah, there's stumbling blocks, but you will rise above them. That's where God wants you to live. God is not going to dominate your life. The devil's dominating your life. He's the one. He's the monkey on your back. He's the one that's causing all the problems in your life. Yeah, there's a remedy. Yeah, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He paid the price for that sin. And so now the Father can forgive us. Yeah. God wants to rescue you. I hope you listen to this today and, and turn from that. This is what it's all about. It's all about rescue. So come to your Lord today with a clean heart and watch what God will do for you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. And, and Father, we pray over this, uh, this video today, Father God, and we pray for your anointing to be on it in a mighty way so that it will reach and touch the hearts of your children that are dominated by sin this morning. Father, let them know that there's a remedy. Help them to understand that you want to rescue them from their sinful ways, Father. Let that, let that ring true in their minds and in their hearts this morning. We know the, the enemy has, uh, has lied to so many and brought great del delusion and distraction and deception. But Father, we break through that right now in Jesus' name. Father, give your children another opportunity again, Father. You're so gracious to us. We thank you for this opportunity you're providing to your children today to wake up, to recognize that it is sin that is dominating their lives. And Father, also that they recognize the salvation that's available to them even right now. We thank you for that, God. We thank you, Lord God, for calling us out of darkness. We remember the time, Father. There's a record of our time. There's a history that we know. There's a, a print in our minds that we still remember the time where sin dominated our lives. And we are so grateful to you, Father God, that you have removed that burden from us and forgiven us. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we willfully surrender to you to become our master of our life, Father. And we know that you want more of a relationship than that. You want to be a true father to us, and we accept that, Father. Yes, we're your children, and we gladly accept that. Thank you, Father. We love you so much, and we praise your holy name. We recommit ourselves to you to let our light shine into this lost and dark dark and dying world, Father, that you might rescue even more as we try to influence the world for righteousness. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. We are dismissed. Thank you, Jesus.